Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to share a case study and a, a short recording that I made with a client of mine, Patrick, who signed up to my master Asana program last year. And we were talking about the workload feature in Asana and how that can be used to track your team's capacity and how much work they can handle. And I really wanted to share what Patrick had done because he went through a really interesting exercise of actually thinking about what is everyone's real capacity? Because if you set up the capacity in Asana incorrectly and just assume that everyone has 40 hours of capacity per week, you could be setting up your team for failure. And he went through this really interesting process of working out what is everyone's actual capacity once I deduct all the sort of fixed costs on their time, things like meetings and other admin work? And then how do I translate that into Asana? So I'll play for you the uh, interview that I did with uh, Patrick. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one help and support with Asana, setting up or optimizing your account or training your team, then please feel free to reach out to me via the uh, details in the description below, and we can chat about how we can work together. So without further ado, let's get into this uh, brief conversation with Patrick all about using workload in Asana. Enjoy. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to this quick case study. I'm talking here with Patrick today, and I wanted to get him to show you how he's gone about planning his workload or specifically everyone's capacity um, in Asana. Um, so, Patrick, I'll, I'll pass it over to you um, if you could uh, explain yeah, what your thought process was in terms of how you actually identified the number of hours of work people are able to actually do during the week and then how you went about setting that up in Asana. That would be that would be awesome. Great. Um, yeah, so one of the things that, um, you know, we're trying to do a better and better job of is, is just predicting what's on our, our plate at any given time and what, what capacity we actually have to do work or new project work. Um, so with the implementation of portfolios and the workload feature within Asana, um, really been trying to use that to look a little further into the future uh, for our organization and planning purposes. So we actually use another tool called Notion um, for really a lot of kind of our uh, team protocols, best practices, reference information, and those sort of things. Um, so what we did was just set up a table here in Notion um, and we kind of um, figured all of these items that you usually go into um, a, a typical week or an average week for us. So. Uh, and then I set up a property for each of our staff members, started off with 40 hours a week as the starting workload. Yeah. And then through each of the categories, uh, staff expectations is really just general reporting, uh, tracking time, you know, those sort of things. Um, staff meetings, we have different amounts for different uh, people on the staff, uh, just based on what their, you know, scheduled interactions are with other staff members. Um, email. Uh, we have different levels just based on that per particular staff position yeah. and, and the volume there. Uh, proactive assistance. This is basically us, us coaching our chapters, um, you know, helping them work on things, look into the future, plan, be the best they can be. Um, and then we have miss mission driving or educational program planning. Um, that one's kind of low just because on an average week, we don't do a lot of that. And then strategic plan, that's uh, Acacia strategic plan driving. Um, so I've got more, more hours for myself there on a weekly basis yep. and less for the other staff, um, putting out fires and incidents and external meetings. So what we did with all of that and created a sum down here at the bottom. So for each staff member, this is me right here. We got the um, total of workload capacity that we actually have available uh, to move, to move on projects, move things forward. So then over here in, and if I, could, uh, I, I might just pause you there, if I could just kind of summarize what I've heard and kind of recap for people listening. Um, so you've started with 40 hours a week. Obviously that's like a fairly typical working week uh, for a full-time employee. And I guess you've deducted like what you would consider the fixed costs, you know, like what are the fixed things we know we're going to have to do every week, like email right. meetings, general admin, I noticed that some people here, like with mission EDU program planning, you know, a lot of people don't do anything for that category. Uh, it's only specific to certain people. Um, but then you end up with like, okay, what is our realistic actual workload? Uh, and I, I mentioned this to you before, before we started recording, but it's surprising actually how much, like some people here are below 20 hours a week, like half of their time is now filled with just general admin and our day-to-day -day running of the business really, which is quite surprising. 
Well, yeah, and um, one of the reasons I did it this way is, is to give ourselves uh, a reasonable expectation for what, what yeah. we can actually get done. Or are we um, over committing to things, expecting too much? Because um, at different parts during the year, some of these things swell so much that we really can't move any projects forward. So it's just, yeah, hopefully a dose of reality. And were you, were you leaning towards being more pessimistic with these numbers? Um, I try, I tried to keep a balance, um, but I okay. did, um, for us, I made it, um, in terms of when the academic year is happening, which for us, we work with college students. So, um, I do have a task in Asana to, uh, update and change the workload capacity when we're not in school. So I have a reminder oh, there and get adjusted so on actually- so you're actually changing people's capacity throughout the year at different seasons. That's really interesting. I actually, I don't think I've heard people do that before, but that's, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, cool. Sorry. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. So then uh, just took that over here and this is just our uh, portfolio that we call project workload. Um, and here you can see, you know, we've got some people that are overloaded, um, but all you do here on the hours estimate, go down to edit capacity. And then I just put in all of those numbers from the table uh, to the left um, to set capacity. You can, um, you know, check apply default max capacity to everyone, but this is, you know, more, uh, more specific. So then we can start drilling down into individual employees. Okay. Um, you know, you've got right now, you've got seven hours planned. You only have 2.65 hours on an average day uh, to get things moved forward. This particular employee, um, he has kind of different pockets of time that he's, you know, has availability and he's able to get stuff done. Um, but really one of the things we're trying to do, or at least that I'm trying to do is to plan further into the future on yeah. exactly what projects I'll be working on. And it's our workplace or environment is fairly uh, dynamic and changing, but um, trying to get a better sense of what, what the future looks like. That's great. Yeah. I, I we were saying before as well that, um, you know, I think this feature is going to be a lot more useful and you're going to get a lot more value from the tool if you are planning into the future. Now, obviously, we can't, we don't always, I guess, like the further out you're planning, the less clarity you have on what you're going to be doing. But what you could even do is, and I don't know if that's what you've done here, but you could even put in blocks that are like a task that says, well, I know that roughly I'm going to be allocating 10 hours this week to this work. I don't know what the specifics are yet, but you might just say, I know this project is coming up and I should budget some time for that. And, and that might get more detailed. You might break that down into smaller tasks later, but you could even just be quite generic with just blocking out some time. And, and, and that's what we've done here with this task. So for instance, I'm calling one of the next projects that I'm working on leverage resources. So basically just yeah. getting all of our resources situated so people can access them 24 hours a day. So then we call this a placeholder task and add a tag called placeholder. And then we put our hours estimate in there, um, which is what triggers on workload. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know exactly what that work is going to be, but I know yeah. that that week is when I'm planning on working on it. To be honest, I've had to shift that back a few times, but but still yeah. just to have those on the calendar to kind of know what's, what's, you know, what's, that's awesome. That's really cool. Now this is, this is great to see. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Any, anything else you'd like to add or, um, um, no, I, I, you know, I think it, it's, uh, it takes a little work and, and, uh, kind of fine tuning. I think it's really worth it though. And the, the overall, the Asana tool and everything it gives you from a kind of 50,000 foot view is, is becoming a lot more valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is kind of totally, it requires a little bit of effort to put the, put in this, um, to put these tasks in here, to think about what people's capacity is and, and definitely plan ahead. But I think once you do, just having that visibility of, like you said, what's coming down the pipe and who on my team, like Benjamin here, who's overloaded and needs some help. Uh, yeah, I can definitely see how it's being, could be very useful. Yeah.